All right, so I'm here with Fog City Midge, of course, you already know. And we are in Washington, D.C. at the tail end of Stop the Steal 2.0 or the sequel or... March for Trump. The, it's the 2.0 of the Million MAGA March. Exactly. So, um, today was the sequel. Yeah, and that's actually not what I want to talk about today, even though we might get to it a little bit. Uh, I want to talk about the censorship. Uh, you guys may have seen a video I did with my buddy George when we did our little escape from New York, and we we're talking about just a very small account that was completely wiped out. And just, in, as I wanted to show the fact that this can happen to somebody with 100 followers or 200,000 followers. Yeah. It's happening all over the place. So I won't let you tell the story, but just so, so they know what we're kind of trying to talk about is, first, you were in the New York Post mm -hmm. talking about censorship of conservative voices. Yeah. Then you had like a little technical glitch with your Instagram. Uh -huh. And when that glitch was fixed, you never really made it back to normal. Is that right? Well, what's weird is, so I noticed it was bizarre. Like a couple months before the election, they really clamped down. And I noticed that it, it felt like the breaks had put, been put on my account. I had had this sort of period of just exponential growth where I felt like my account was just boom, boom, boom. Like I was reaching people. Everything was working. And then it was like a couple months ahead of the election. I noticed everybody's really like slowed down. There was like a heavy suppression. And then it kind of opened up for like three, four weeks. And then the week before the election, boom, mm. we were like stopped, right? It was like, boom, no more. And then after the election, it opened up again. And I was like, okay, cool. They're not, they're not stopping us from posting about the fraud. They're not stopping us about posting about these things. And that lasted for... We just got censored right there for, because for, of that. For, for, oh, I, there, was no, there was technically no voter fraud. It was called in for Joe Biden. Uh, I think we have to say that now. So anyways, they they there was a short period where things were, were like clicking back and we were still like reaching people. I was still gaining new followers. I was still, uh, you know, on average, my account used to reach about a million people a week. And so I would look at the engagement. You can look at your stats. Um, you know, once you have a, if you have a public account and if you have an account, I think at a certain size, they show you your insights is what it says on Instagram. So all of a sudden, a few weeks into sort of posting about this, the, the fraud, posting about the steal, posting about all these things happening with the election, shenanigans. all of these shenanigans that occurred. Uh, you know, when when the counting stopped and then the little mice come out to play and, and naughty things happen, um, I started posting about that. And then all of a sudden it was like, m my account has been so censored and so silenced. It wasn't just, oh, they're not loading my account into everyone's feed. It's now full out censorship uh, and what they call a shadow ban. Yeah. Basically, my account is there. I'm not banned, but... To most people, they stop seeing my content. And that's why, because I was getting messages mm -hmm. asking about you, and I was like, this is just bizarre, and you weren't showing up in my feed. Yeah. So it, it's absolutely insane what's happening. And um, I'll give you some numbers real quick. So my account is down 93%. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I'm reaching 93% fewer people. My account So they, that's almost them. everybody. Yeah, that's almost everybody. So it's being shown to very few people and a lot of people would tell me, hey, I come to you to get my news. I come to your stories. I love seeing like what you're posting. You're kind of giving people, I, I try to do my stories like ADD like world, right? <laughs> news for people who who live in ADD world, right? Gotcha. Which is me too, you know? It's like, you're I, a huge inspiration for me too, just. Oh, thanks. That's why. But I try to just like, okay, we gotta like give people the highlights. People don't have a lot of time in this world. Like, let's just give them the important stuff that they need to know, not waste anybody's time. So people really loved my stories and it, and it encouraged me to then make them as, as good as they could be. And now all of a sudden my, my stories are reaching like literally 5% of the people that used to see them are seeing them. So it's, it's very discouraging, but I also feel bad for the people, one, that love my account, and two, feel like they look to me to kind of at least tune in and know what's going on. So all of a sudden, if they think, oh, Maggie's gone, she's not posting anymore, maybe she's lost hope, maybe she's given up. And it really is upsetting and discouraging to me because number one, I'm still in this fight. We are still fighting back against the fraud. We're gonna expose this, you know, Trump, Trump, we need to get him across the finish line because I'm not about to sit by and accept a Biden presidency. Uh, and I'm not gonna sit by and allow our country to be stolen from us. So 
it makes me very mad on that level, but all of this censorship is basically to silence and suppress people that are speaking out against the voter fraud uh, and to expose what's really going on. And I'm not the only one being shadow banned. Totally. You know, like I look at, I haven't seen typical liberal in months. I haven't, I haven't either. I, didn't, I honestly straight. forgot until we just talked about it. I know. Like Gay Who's Straight, she's got one of my favorite accounts of all time. She is so badly shadow banned. I think we're probably at about the same that you just don't see it. And people tell me that they they don't see my stories. They don't come up on their feed at all. And so people either they go through their whole thing and I'm not there in the stories at the top. Or they go and they seek me out and they type in my, my handle. And they have to type in the whole handle. The whole thing. The whole thing. And then even then, it's really funny because you'll type in... You know, it used to be like fog, and I'd like be like exactly fog yeah. city, and then there's like it a could fog. really just be F O. Yeah, yeah. I mean, depending on yeah, yeah. exactly, especially because most people, you know, for me, what's weird is it's like there's like other fog city like vintage or like you know like flea markets or something fog city something, but literally I'm like not even in this list, and I'm the number one person who's got fog city something in yeah. their handle. So it's all suppression. It's very disappointing because you used to just type in a little bit and it would pop right up. But yeah, this is how they, I think they, they know, big tech knows that they got so much pushback after they just completely banned, you know, Loomer, Alex Jones and Milo Yiannopoulos on the same day. Uh. And that was the first sign of, that we saw where big tech was colluding with other tech companies to take people out because they took out all three of them on the same day at the same time across all platforms. I mean, that's incredibly evil when you think about yeah. it. Yeah, well, they're colluding. They, yeah, the, the, and these are separate companies, you know? This is like, well, dude, Google's- well, That's the Google, Silicon Valley Mafia. Well, yeah, but you see like, so YouTube owns, uh, Google owns YouTube, and then, you know, there's Twitter separate, and then there's, you know, Facebook, Instagram. But think of all three of those coming together and saying, we're gonna just completely delete someone and destroy their life. And now though, I think they realized that that was like a step too far. They said, oh, what can we get away with? Can we take out the most, extreme people right so they take out these guys but then someone like myself who's pretty vanilla pretty you know like straightforward i yeah. try to not i know the the things that are definitely going to get you banned so it's like i just try to post like the straight hard news like i don't go off in conspiracy theory la la land maybe maybe a little <laughs> bit if i'm having like i've got some thoughts but i try to always make it clear like here's what i think you know and here's what what other people are saying and i try to use always headlines and sources but i just have to say so now that they know, they can't just outright delete people, but they can shadow ban you. So yeah. they can destroy your business, they can destroy you, they can destroy your reach, they can destroy your audience that you spend years And the morale, with. like just- And the morale, yeah. So for you and the, like the followers that yeah. like you, and like you said, they You're might like, be like- what happened to her? Yeah, is she, she get deleted? Is she, is she not on the Trump train? Is she giving up? You know, is she packed okay. it up what's, and what's gone What's the guy's home? name? Who? Uh, uh, Dylan, I think, the guy who- Oh, completely. Sorry. I, now, he, now we're getting off. People should not be spoken. <laughs> okay, about. sorry. I'm angry at All right. people who who just gave up. Who I don't know. Jumped off the Trump the Trump train. That's not I'm good. on the Trump train. So please, like, yeah. Okay. It just makes me mad that that people maybe think that I've given up and and nothing could be further from the truth. Awesome. Um, really quick. So, let's move over to YouTube if mm -hmm. you don't mind. Yeah. So obviously you have your own personal YouTube. Are you seeing the same thing there? Okay, so outside of the war room, and YouTube stuff. has a different. I want to, I want to talk of, about that also. Oh yeah, so YouTube has a separate issue with the censorship. So for me, what I've noticed on YouTube is that certain videos will be basically I'm monetized on YouTube. It took me a long time to get there. I got there very excited about that once they finally approved me. And then what I notice though is like most of my videos are not monetized. Either they don't qualify or they. They flag them, so I, it's really difficult for me to make money off. And of your content people. is not extreme. No, like, it's not... I literally go to these rallies and I interview people. Yeah. These are man on the street, uh, you know, no swear words, no yeah. cursing, nothing inappropriate, no nothing vulgar, um, you know, kind of stuff that's appropriate for almost any age yeah. age group, yeah. right? So um, it's really interesting that they feel like they have to target this kind of this kind of content, but most of it is not monetized or they might start it out monetized and then someone will flag it and then they say oh it doesn't qualify for monetization but meanwhile it might get a couple hundred thousand views and then i i will at that point that it gets flagged i'll challenge it but they take two to three weeks to get back to you and then they'll say oh we reviewed it of course there's nothing wrong with this video you you are approved for monetization but at that point you've already got so all the, the views, views yeah you know and then three weeks later the video's dead so great i got 
2,000 views at the front end and you know a few thousand views on the back end. But meanwhile, I didn't make any money at all and maybe several hundred thousand views. So it's a way of destroying any money or opportunity to make money that you might have had. So it's a completely different problem. And I guess that leads me to my next question about what you guys are experiencing on War Room. Oh, yeah. Um, so obviously, I mean, they're still letting you go live, right? I mean, I know you guys were taken down. The live stream was taken down at least once. Yeah, this um, is next level. This and is next now level. they're not letting you this... repost the... This is so crazy. So, uh, you know, I've been really blessed to, I was invited to be on War Room with Steve Bannon. They did a special election night coverage, incredible, overlooking the Capitol, all election night. That was night. amazing. I was, on, I was on the show. I thought I was going to be on for like an hour. I was on for the whole night. It was like six, seven hours. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like 3 a.m. I'm like dying. But yeah, so we're on, we're on all night. That's when the Biden votes came in. Yes, of course. We were up like watching it happen. I'm yeah. like, dude, like why? No, nobody leave. Just stay. Yeah. Keep counting. But um, so, you know, we did the coverage that night. Uh, and I also have to say, amazing that they translated actually in Chinese and broadcasted on GTV. So oh. just, it's amazing. Um, the people that were reaching with that show, like the deplorables in China, like the real people of China, not the, <laughs> the CCP, the people that are fighting back, the real freedom fighters. Donald Trump don't trust China. China is asshole. They, they watched this network, GTV, and it's... um. You know, it's amazing. So, uh, you know, we're reaching a very wide audience. It's not just Americans. Too many, and that's why they're trying to stop you. Throughout the world, right? Uh, and inspiring, like, a, a nationalist, populist, you know, anti-globalist movement across the world. And so this is why, you know, you meet Chinese people who come up to you on the, who come up to me on the street, and they're like, thank you to Steve Bannon. Like, he's like, a, a, you know, thank you for what he's doing, for speaking out for the people of China, and speaking out for the Uyghurs, and, and all of these, you know, sort of marginalized people. So... Anyways, the show is amazing. It's very powerful. It reaches a lot of people. And the YouTube now has been censored. They, you know, Steve said something one day on the show. And all of a sudden, <laughs> they, you know, he said something that they claimed was, you know, violence, whatever, a threat. But it was like a figure of speech that he was using. So all of a sudden, you know, Kathy Griffith doesn't get her Twitter or her any of her social media deleted, but she can hold up a severed bloody head of President Trump. But but Steve Bannon uses a figure of speech and all of a sudden, you know, the world has a meltdown. So what happened at the time, this is crazy. So we're in the live stream on YouTube. They cut the live stream and within a minute, they deleted both Twitter accounts, both, both of the war room. There were two different war room Twitter accounts. Both of them got deleted at the same time. So you just think, you go, is YouTube really sitting there? Someone is sitting there watching, waiting to hit that button. And at the same time, they call up Twitter and say, yep. now you've got permission, go de go delete that person. So that's what's really crazy. And then now what they've done with the new Twitter rules is they said, if you make any claim of that there was election fraud that, that would have overturned the election, uh, Dominion voting systems, any of these things, if you make these claims that you know that's what caused Joe Biden to win, if you make that claim, uh, YouTube said they can delete, just delete your videos. And so now they're going back and they're deleting old episodes of War Room. They've already started. Oh, I thought, well, I thought the date was like from here on out, like Safe Harbor or whatever. No. But I mean, you obviously can't already, trust them. Yeah, but they've already deleted episodes. They've already deleted like that, that first day they deleted uh, our morning episode and then they deleted yesterday's episode. And so they're already doing this. And what's, what's particularly damaging is, you know, we get about 30,000 views live when we're on YouTube during the show. But then we get over, you know, yeah. up to 80, 100,000 views over the course of the next 12 hours, people that can't watch it at that moment. Of course. So of course now all of a sudden- Come home from work and you want to pop it on. Yeah, yeah, you're like, let's see what he had to say today. But all of a sudden now all those people won't, won't see it. Or if they do, they have to seek it out and it makes it a lot more difficult. So it's a way of preventing truth and information from getting out there. And honestly, I. I feel like we're living in communist China. Like, I feel like this is Unfortunately. like- Unfortunately. Yeah, like CCP level censorship. It's sad. And I guess last thing, or maybe second to last thing. Mm -hmm.